Hi, I'm Rivka Mitchell, and I'm in grade 11 here. Um, so, <laughs> art is a language that connects us all. But not only is art a communication tool, it is the only form of communication that I tr feel truly comfortable using. <laughs> Art gives me the confidence to express ideas to a group of people because it provides me with the right combination of exposure and disguise. A lot of the time, I struggle with the possibility of being fully understood because I understand the consequences and the judgments which might accompany it. I fear being misinterpreted and the idea of improperly explaining myself. When I make a work, I think less about these barriers that would normally stop me, or whether the product is right. I know when what I am going to make is right for me in that moment, because it will be all I can think about, and all I will want to think about. This feeling of confidence in myself takes away enough of my self-consciousness so that I have room to truly express an idea. As well, the time that I spend thinking about this idea makes it a necessity for me to create the piece. Otherwise, I know that I and my thoughts will never evolve. And this brings me to why I think art is really important. It allows us as a species to evolve. As I have said, without art, I do not think I would have the courage to present ideas. I would live inside my brain and keep everything hidden. To me, my brain is a safe environment that is only semi-realistic. It is influenced by what is around it, or, or what is around me, but ultimately I end up altering these realities in my mind, making them fictional at the same time. A brain, for me, seems to exist in between these two worlds of reality and the imaginary. It is a space where I feel comfortable, but do not feel as though it tru is truly real, because these thoughts have not yet entered the physical world. They only appear real. As I become more capable of expressing myself through art, I can take this space of comfort and make it possible to fully exist within it. As I continue to create, I develop a better understanding of myself and can more and more accurately create the space in reality, thus creating a safe environment for me to express myself to a larger audience. By bringing these things to a physical space, I can properly analyze myself and simplify what seems so difficult to understand in my brain. Everything is more difficult for me to understand until it is visually represented. By being able to physically examine your thoughts, everything seems simplified, making it easier to draw conclusions and move on. Doing so, we develop a more concrete understanding of ourselves, a better idea of what we would like the world to be and how we can make that happen. We make decisions based on these ideals that we have and attempt to make change. In terms of art, I think that ideas are presented in order to educate people about the problems that we face and also in attempt to relate, inform, and alter our views or approaches. With this, we develop a higher level of empathy for each other. It is in this way that we evolve. The knowledge of ourselves changes the way that we view the world, what we would like to introduce to the world, and how we can create art. When we share this knowledge or idea, we make it possible to relate to one another and unite as a species. The art that I've been making involves my attempts to create a physical representation of a space that does not belong in any particular environment. Like how I see my brain, it is a form of safety, but it is only semi-realistic. The way that I set up to achieve this goal is by making something that I believe is part of two set environments, not unlike reality and the imaginary. Being a part in both makes it part of neither. The piece would therefore exist between two worlds with parameters that we have set out. Not uncommon to fields of art where we have set meanings for a painting or a sculpture, but a painting has depth, mass, and occupies a space, not unlike a sculpture. This then begs the question for me. How do we place the pieces that take place in both? What I wanted to create in the end was something that would not be a part of any set world or environment, but would belong separately and between them. This is how I came to the creation of these paintings, one of which you see before you over there. <laughs> um, 
Each one shows these shapes, shapes which began natural, but through my alterations have become industrial. These shapes began as tracings of rocks, organic shapes that showed the basic outlines of a natural object. As I altered them, curved lines became cold, straight, industrial lines. Starting on an 8 inch by 6 inch field, they have been placed on these larger canvas and each is to scale. This is how I've been attempting to convey this idea to the world. The piece began as natural and was then changed into something man-made, but is still influenced by nature. Both of these environments that we have named, both are there, but because of this, the piece does not belong in either category. Not unlike how I view my brain, a mixture between reality and the imaginary. This has been a way for me to bring my ideas of being comfortable in this semi-realistic environment, my brain, to reality. As well, it allows me to examine my interest in space and how we approach it. I think that ultimately, I would like to come to a conclusion as to what defines space to us and whether it really exists. Because at the moment, if I were to think about it, I'm not really sure it does exist. Perhaps space is simply everything and we are a part of it. Thank you.